something new. Top deadliest Christmas gift of 2017, and it took a lot of deliberation to decide what was the most dangerous thing, and in the end, I reckon that one of the worst offenders is going to be these little camping lanterns, because people will be getting these as cheap gifts left, right, and centre, probably. And there's a lot of different styles. There are so many different styles. I've got How many have I got here? I wonder if I, I've got eight different ones here. So let's uh, take a look and see what makes them dangerous and why, if you've received one of these as a gift, you should be aware of a certain little feature it's got. And if you've given one as a gift, you may want to get back in touch with the person and check that you've given them a good quality one. How do you even do that? I, I don't even know how you even tell the difference. I don't know if there's an official product that these are a clone of because they're just mass produced just completely in so many different styles. But the gist is that you've got a little camping torch Where's the original? Let's take a look at the original that we looked at. And it's quite clever. It's got a focused beam in the end, which is actually quite smart. It's quite nicely made. It's got a open section that as you open it, it automatically switches on. It's got a nice bright diffused light source inside. And to charge it, oh, well, for charging stuff, it's got a USB port, so you can theoretically plug your phone into it to charge. It's got a solar panel on top to help charge it during the day in sunlight, or you can plug in one of these, where, where's a loose one? One of these little sort of mini figure eight leads. It's not a standard figure eight lead. You can plug it in, and you can plug it into the mains to charge, and the little red LED lights to show it's charging, and it tops the batteries up inside. But there is a terrible design flaw. And it's not like it's an accident. It's like they've done it deliberately, and goodness knows why. When you plug this into the mains to charge, the output becomes live at mains voltage from the USB port. It's just by design. This one also had the extra feature that the chrome on this bezel around this uh, button came live as well at mains voltage. Uh, where is the most recent one I can show you inside? So here's the most recent one. And, uh, well, let's uh, plug it in first and I'll demonstrate that little hazard. So uh, where's the, the... plug that in. So it's now charging. You can see a slight shimmer off that LED. I'm going to be careful not to touch this with both hands. I just don't trust it at all. Uh, and I'm going to stick this lead in. I'm going to reference uh, one of these uh, leads of this lamp to ground via a method that won't trip the RCD when it goes. I'm going to touch that button. It just did it again. I just touched that chrome button. Did you see that? Did you catch it? popped and it blew all the chrome clear. So that chrome button was live at mains voltage. And if I poke it into the USB port here, you can see the lamp lighting up because the only thing between you and the mains when you plug into that USB port is a diode. Ah, these are terrible. Absolutely terrible. I'm going to make sure I unplug this. Oh, there's another thing. If you've received one of these adapters with anything for Christmas, I'd recommend you uh, find a better adapter or if it's got a plug on it, cut the plug off and put uh, one of your local plugs on that, that actually is suited to the uh, job because these things are just a death trap in their own right. They're not capable of handling high current. And also uh, in the UK, the UK version has one of the best features, apart from the fact it defeats all the safety mechanisms of uh, the UK electrical socket. You can actually stick the earth pin of a plug into the live terminal. These are just not. If you've got some of these in the house, bin them. It's the safest thing. Get yourself a proper adapter from you, a local goods supplier or just uh, cut the plug off, as I say, and replace it with a proper plug. In this case, I'd cut it off and replace this plug, or better still, i just throw the product in the bin or modify it. But uh, these ones, uh, this one is the latest version of this, and it's even better in terms that the other ones you had to lift the solar panel off, the token gesture solar panel. In this case, the solar panel, only it, it's got like seven sections, and the circuitry is such that's going to put out 3.5 volts, roughly. The circuitry is such that after it's gone through a diode, it's not even going to charge the batteries in this. So it's token gesture. All it does is light the power indicator. So... Uh, this one is a nice feature you can just bayonet cap the top off to expose all the live connections inside. And once you get it off, you can see the little token gesture circuit board, which is uh, taking mains in. It's using this capacitor to limit the current uh, on each half wave, and then it's charging a set of the smallest rechargeable cells it could get. I was going to say nickel metal hydride. Who knows what they are? Um, and then that just taps straight to the 
USB port. So the USB port is only getting, at best, 4.5 volts. Most of the time it will be down about 3.6. It probably won't charge anything anyway. Maybe useful for plugging other stuff into it, but not while it's plugged into the mains because that will be live at 240 volts in the case of the UK, 120 volts in the case of some other countries. Really quite weird why they do it this way. Because they could have put a micro USB port in, they could have put a little charge controller circuit board, they could have put a fat lithium cell in here, and it would have just turned this into an absolute brilliant light. But they haven't. But you can make that modification yourself if you so desire, if you've got the technical savvy. But yes, uh, so I'm going to nominate these. I'm going to show you them all one by one, so you can tell if you've got one or not. This is uh, one of the simplest. It's a straight on and off. This one is an extra feature. You can put batteries in it. You can put either alkaline batteries, in which case if you plug it into the mains, it will try and charge them, and they may go pop. Or you can put nickel metal hydride cells in and charge them. But note that these contacts will be live at mains voltage when it's plugged into the mains. Uh, there's this one here. It's a very simple one. It is just one light again. Oh, there's the one with the disco ball on top, which has already killed its batteries, but that rotates. It's perfect for those deadly disco camping sessions. There's one with the fan, the angleable fan, which is designed... All right, okay. ..to uh, blow away the smoke when your charred fingers are the, of the smoke coming off them. So it's got the light, it's got the fan. Lovely. Um, what else? Now, the construction of these... Do you know what? It's a crime that they've done this because... ..they've got a really nice solid mechanism for the actual switch in here. And if you unscrew the end, the reflector, and you pop all the stuff out the end, the reflector has a sort of good quality sort of 1 watt, 3 watt Superflux star LED in it. And it's got a proper switch with a spring to take up the slack for the mechanism for uh, turning it on when you extend it out. It's a really nicely made light, just let down by this strange choice of using uh, that dangerously non-isolated power supply. It's very strange. So if you've uh, given these as gifts, if you've received them as gifts, you should be aware that the majority of these on sale on eBay at quite acceptable prices for what they are, are just a little bit dangerous, so it might be worth uh, taking action regarding that.